edge highlighting. Probably one of the first fancy technique that we all learned in the beginning because it's a good way to highlight your model and separate the various parts. And what if I told you there is more to this technique? That it doesn't have to be super time consuming. And it doesn't require super fancy brush skills as well. Well, today I'm gonna share with you some tips that'll make hedge highlighting more efficient, easier, and also stress-free. And showing you that you don't need super steady hands to do it. What is hedge highlighting? It is a way of highlighting your models, giving definition and readability and divide the various parts of the model. And you do that just by outlining the edges. From the GW approach, we're kind of used to highlight every single edge present on the model, even those edges that aren't edges. So, so where should you place your highlights if you want a more realistic and cooler effect? Well, the easy answer is that you should highlight just the edges facing up towards the light. This doesn't mean that the other edges facing down don't receive any light, but it's for sure they receive less light. So what changes is just the intensity. But at the end of the day, we can take some creative liberties in order to, you know, define our model more. Realism doesn't have to reign throughout your whole model, but I think it's also important to be aware about how reality works in order to just decide to not follow 100% those rules. There are some few instances where hedge highlighting the whole model is the better choice. When you want to highlight a very dark model, whether it's like Dark Angels power armor or, you know, Black Templar or any kind of black armor, with hedge highlights, they look better. And the reason is very simple, is because light distribution. Very quickly before we move on, I'm trying to go full-time here on YouTube because I recently lost my other job. If you like what I do and want to support it in any way, there's Patreon, or you can do private coaching or display commissions, or even just subscribe, you know, help me spread the word on how good I am. <laughs> on with the video. Painting just the edges of these very dark models of black, dark green models allows you to highlight your model without running the risk of reading another color. For example, your Black Templar won't read gray with hedge highlights. But if you do like volumetric highlights, you will have a hard time making your model read as black because it's hard. This is another example where, yeah, it's not 100% realistic, but it's very efficient and really come to appreciate. There is one place where you should absolutely use hedge highlighting. It's something that's gonna blow your mind because it's not that obvious to understand. So, but first let's talk consistency. Wherever you decide to place your hedge highlights, your consistency needs to be on point. The paint on your brush needs to flow well in order for you to get decent hedge highlighting. If you struggle with finding the right consistency, whether it's too thin or too thick, I'm gonna try to solve that problem for you. <clears throat> okay, let's begin. I'm gonna show you a very simple trick for getting the consistency right for this job and for many other things. So I'm gonna pick up some of my paint I have on my palette and then I'll add one and two drops of water. I mean, I'm testing on a base here, but the trick is you kind of have to develop that feeling of when you mix the paint and you can feel it under your brush that it flows well. You understand that by uh, feeling no resistance when, when you mix. So that's pretty much the secret of a good consistency. And here I'm just practicing some lines. That's this, this is a very good exercise. And you could do it at any level and it gets you good. Uh, it gets you practicing lines. So do it, I guess. Just practice some lines as a skill that you need for miniature painting. And you can decide to go thick or thinner. Speaking of, let's talk about something that might stop some people from hedge highlighting, which is brush control. So most of the time, you actually don't need as much skill with your brush to apply hedge highlights, because most of the times you can rest your brush against the edge and let the edge do the work for you. You just need a good brush and a good consistency, which by now you should have. Sometimes the 
angle will be more shallow and this thing won't be as possible, but this is where the exercise with the base comes useful. But what if I don't have steady hands, Alice? I don't have a steady hand and that's because of anxiety. And on camera, I am even worse. And you can clearly see from the shots I'm taking for these videos, my hydrolytes are not perfect, but the final result on the model looks really, really cool. So you don't really need to have a super steady hand in order to make the most of it of hedge highlighting. From my many years using this technique, I figured out two main things. Number one, it's not super important to have super straight lines. What's really important ha is to have at least two layers that you can layer up with. Number two is picking the right color for hedge highlighting. You want your first layer to be slightly darker and you can use the second layer to really push that contrast. Go thick on the first layer, be bold. And also the second layer doesn't need to be everywhere. It can be applied sparingly. So the first layer can shine through. So where you should avoid at all costs putting hedge highlights. It should be obvious, it's not, but it should be obvious, especially because how we basically all learned this technique. All organic materials should not have hedge highlights. Even like in skin, in the elbow, the muscles, that they shouldn't have like hedge highlights. Even in cloth, you are used to just highlight the edges and here's the surprise. There is a surprising place where you should put an edge highlight, even though it's not like 100% accurate as a term because there is no edge. But the fact that you are like putting a thin line into a place, I'm pretty comfortable to say that it's an edge highlight. This mysterious place are all the concave surfaces, cloth, capes, even skin, they do have some spots where the conch, conch, it actually receives light. It's true that capes, loincloth and whatever, they do have some hedge highlights, but most of the time it's not what has been taught by GW. Realistically, highlight cloth and capes, a very complicated topic that deserves a video of itself. So if you're interested, maybe write a comment or, you know, subscribe, maybe, please. And now you know more about hedge highlighting. Now you can properly use this technique in your painting. There's still one problem. There's still one technique you're not taking full advantage of. You might be actually stuck in the DGW way. So click this video here if you want to learn how to actually use dry brush the right way. See you there.